Welcome to Game Reactor TV. We're here in Paris to look at all the latest titles from Ubisoft. Check it out. Basically the ambitions and where we set the bar for Assassin's Creed was incredibly high and we showed off a lot of it at last year's E3, but we hadn't actually built the enormous world yet. So we've been building three cities which are each 15 times the size of what we showed at last year's E3. You get a glimpse of them a little bit in the game footage that we showed you. And then we've built the countryside in between. We've built all the technology to go behind that. We've built the Assassin Stronghold, this other location where the final battle takes place. Plus we've been spending a lot of time really perfecting the gameplay. I think you got to, some people got to play it at last year's E3 and we did a live demo at X06, but there's a lot of really great stuff that comes out of the details, like making sure that you have the physics modeled properly on the crowd so that when you run into them you get the right domino effect. It's not the first features that you're going to sell but as a gamer when you're playing over and over again you're going to get them and it's really going to make the difference because then you're going to be like whoa you know just running through the crowd and pushing people out of the way and seeing how they react and then turning around once in a while and noticing that when the guy is talking to you his facial animation is in sync to what he's saying all the AI is driven separately is incredibly satisfying in terms of adding depth and really the feeling that you've been there. The hardest thing to implement, well there's a couple things. We made technology, brand new technology from scratch for this game, so this is a brand new engine, brand new set of tools. When you make tools, real people on the team have to use them and as they use them there is always new requests that you didn't know you'd have. So there's always the challenges involved in making a new engine. The other thing is we didn't approach this game in terms of, okay we're making a first person shooter. Alright, what are the five best first person shooters? Okay we'll do that, we'll combine them, we'll add this thing. Our goal was was really to redefine gameplay and that's really tough. You don't know what's going to work, what's not. There's a lot of trial and error. You think something's going to be fun, you do it, you're like eh, not so fun, you know, and then you get a lot of surprises where things start coming together. So it's really like being able to make progress and have an aggressive schedule and still be pushing the boundaries and allow yourself to iterate and come up with new things. My personal favorite thing in Assassin's Creed is the chases and the escapes. So they're two sides of the same coin, but like some targets are cowards. If they notice that you're near or, you know, you, you kill enough people, they'll get scared and they'll start running away. This creates like fantastic chases where you have these these targets running all over the city and you're trying to go through crowd, get through them, up and down buildings. And then the same goes for once you've created havoc in the city and you have like this group of guys running after you and the sensation is you really have to be smart to outrun them. So you're like, okay, I run a bit faster, they're coming from there and there, you know, I'm gonna take this alley, there's no crowd in the alley because it's, you know, it's narrow and there's no merchants so I can run without getting stopped by the crowd. There's a wall, I'm gonna climb up the wall, I know they can't follow me, have this like thinking process that really it's up to you invent and it's based on real life so it's rules that you can think of. You can have chases over and over again they're never going to be the same. I mean you you decide right? Then you can uncover the little nooks and crannies or like I know I can hide there, I know there's a good hiding spot there, I know this building is great for like losing guards and you can get to know the city like that. The game structure is basically you have the assassin stronghold Masayef. That's where your ma the master of the assassins is and he gives you a certain amount of targets at a time. Sometimes you may have one guy sometimes you may have three guys. If you have three guys, for instance, one may be in Jerusalem, one may be in Damascus, one may be in Acre. So first thing you do is you decide where you want to go and who you want to take out first. When you arrive in a city, you have the option, you know, if you haven't been there before, to explore. If you want, you can try and do your investigation without going to see your bureau leader. Each city has a bureau leader. But the easier thing to do is you go see your bureau leader. He's going to tell you, okay, listen, good places to gather information are in the public market over here, in in front of this church when people are coming out, blah, blah blah. So he'll put the specific spots where you can get information. You go there, you do the gameplay related to that type of investigation. Once you've got your information, you go back to the bureau, you tell him, okay, I've done those things, I, I know all there is to know about the guy, I'm ready. He says, okay, great, do it. And then that unlocks your assassination mission. Assassination missions all have their own 
specific setup. So whereas all the rest of the stuff, you know, including the investigation that you have to do and also the free missions and everything else and the chases all happen in the open cities, you have to figure out your approach to there, you have to figure out how to get close to them. Each target has a different setup, different amount of guards, different level of awareness, different skills, and then you basically go in and then there's the other part which is very different from other games is after you kill him it's not over. So that's the whole escape. What you have to do is escape somehow lose the guards because you can't go charging full force with all the guards behind you back into the assassin bureau so there's a whole thing where you have to lose them hide a bit they kind of don't know where you are and then while being careful not to attract attention make your way back to the uh, assassin bureau then you're like okay you're done if you're done all of your missions that were assigned you go back and see your boss Sinan and he gives you the new things the assassins were a historic group of people but we're making a fictional game based on the assassins we kind of reinvented our own type of modern thinking assassins based on what we wanted to do. And we were inspired by their motto, nothing is true, everything is permitted. So the assassins in our game are modern thinking and they basically, they don't believe in war and they think that the only people who suffer are the population. I think they're more like us, the modern mentality towards, or at least like young people that I know, the mentality towards what's going on in the world and you know the way to resolve conflicts and our views towards religion not necessarily, I think in general, being the same as what they used to be. So they're more, they're more of an open kind of modern thinking group. There were no political statements, like that's not the main goal of this game. The goal of this game is to have people have fun and like to create a great action experience. Definitely a core and a lot of thought put into the story, but we don't have a political agenda. I think that video games are art in a lot of ways, but we're still getting there. I definitely think video games are the most exciting entertainment medium around now because there's so much to explore. Like Unlike painting, where you walk through the building of the Louvre and then you go to the Centre Pompidou or any other um, museum that's in Paris, you'll see a huge diversity of stuff and a a lot of things have been done already. In games, we feel like we're just at the tip of the iceberg and there's so much left to explore and there's so much left to push. I think that the only barrier is that it's also a business. It's more difficult for people to take chances and to make decisions only on the artistic side of things. But I think it's happening. We see it with independent gamers. We see a lot of interesting things happening on smaller, new, different kinds of casual games that are taking a different approach. And we see it sometimes when companies are willing to take a chance and I think in some cases Assassin's Creed is pushing the limits of that. We took a lot of chances in terms of subtlety, you know, this isn't like the regular recipe, let's make a bunch of explosions, let's like, you know, do the usual wow things that people are waiting for. We spent a lot of time and money getting these little details and we're hoping people appreciate it, but it's not, it's not the written formula. We worked with a historian from the beginning. We had a, a historian get us all of our reference material. He went into libraries where he had access that we didn't have access and got us the actual plans of the cities. Huge database of images. And then we had two other historians on board later in the process, uh, one who worked on Kingdom of Heaven and uh, the other one who is a professor at Oxford um, who specializes in the Third Crusade in the specific year that our game takes place. He actually wrote a book about the year of 1191 and they reviewed the script for accuracy, they also reviewed um, the art direction, videos of in-game and it's been really cool to get their feedback, they're impressed and I mean hopefully people who are into that kind of detail will appreciate it too. If not, well, it's, you know, it's alright, there's still good action in the game. <laughs> We haven't really kept that much about Altair secret. You know, we've talked about his personality. There are three books being written also about Assassin's Creed and those are going to give all of the backstory for Altair. What we're keeping secret is more of the premise for the franchise, which is something different. Thank you. Thank you, Jade. Thanks. Good to see you guys. God knows you lonely souls.